Today's lesson is on probability with the fundamental counting principle, permutations, and combinations. Now we've actually studied the fundamental counting principle, permutations, combinations, and theoretical probability already in previous lessons, but because we're putting them all together today, I went ahead and made a little review here. The fundamental counting principle states that the number of ways in which a series of successive things can occur is found by multiplying the number of ways in which each thing can occur. And I think the example we used was like you had three different colored shirts and two different colored pants. How many different ways could you get dressed in the morning? And then we took three times two and found you could have six different outfits that day. Uh, permutation. That's where order matters. Taking n things, take an r at a time. And we have the algebraic notation here. Uh, the combination formula, that's where order doesn't matter. And again, we have the same similar formula there for the combination and then theoretical probability of event denoted P of E is equal to the number of outcomes in event E divided by the total number of possible outcomes or N of E over N of S. So for our first example we have four boys and three girls line up at a classroom to be excused for recess. Find the probability that the first person in line is a girl and the last person in line is a boy. So first of all, is this a permutation or is this a combination? Well, this is definitely a permutation because order matters. Um, when you're talking about who's in line first and last, that's clearly order matters. So find the total possible ways this children can be lined up. Not with the first person being a girl or the last person being a boy. Just any, any different ways if you just threw seven children in line, how could they be lined up? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to take the permutation of seven children lined up seven at a time. So we have seven factorial over seven minus seven factorial, which is going to be seven factorial over zero factorial. I'm going to use my calculator, seven, and then the probability function for my calculator, factorial, is going to be 5,040. 0 factorial is 1. And so that gives us 5,040 different ways the children could be lined up. Now, when I'm trying to find the number of ways the children can be lined up with the specifications that the girl has to be in the first and the boy has to be in the last, this is a little bit more complicated and we can't really do that with a, a permutation. It's probably easier to use the fundamental counting principle. We have seven different spots. Okay, we have, I know we've got three girls, we have four boys, so I'm just using the international male and female symbols here, um, just so I can think in my head, I, I, I can see it in my head, three girls, four boys. The first person in line needs to be a girl, so because I'm talking about this first spot, and I'm picking from girls only, how many choices do I have to pick girls only for this one spot? Well, I've got three choices, okay? Now I'm gonna go to the last spot. The last spot is boys only. How many different ways could I pick a boy to be in the last spot? Well, there's four boys to pick from. So now that I've got those two uh, worked out. Notice once you've placed the girl, you're going to take a girl out. Okay? And once I've placed the boy, I'm going to take one of the boys out. Then I have to place all of the rest of the people in the other five spots. Now, how, what do I have in these spots? Is it a girl or a boy or it doesn't matter? Well, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to say people. People have to go in all of these spots. Alright? So when I'm talking about people, I have a group of five people left. So how many different ways could I put the next person in? Well, there's five different ways. I'm going to take one of them out. How many spots do I have in the next one? Well, there's only four people left. Now, it doesn't really matter if I'm taking out a girl or boy. In this case, they're just people. Um, how many spot ways do I have left? Well, now I only have three people left. So I take one of them out. And then how many different ways can I place the next one? Well, there's only two people left and then only one person left. 
So I'm using the fundamental counting principle to make sure that the first and the last have the right um, people in them and then everyone else just gets placed in after, but it's out of a different group. So now I'm going to multiply that 3 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 4 and that gets me 1,440 different ways that we could line the children up with a girl being in the first and a boy being in the last. Lastly, I want to calculate the probability that the girl is in first and the boy is in last. So the way we can prob that probability calculate that probability is the girl first, boy last, is equal to the number and of our event divided by the number of our sample space. So that's 1440 divided by 5040. Now I think that this reduces, I know at least we can reduce by 10, right? That gets me 144 over 504. And then I think I can reduce by 8. 144 divided by 8 is 18. 504 divided by 8 is 63. And you know what? I think that can go again by 9, I think. So that gets me 2 over 7. So the 2 7 chance that a girl is going to be first and a boy is going to be last in this particular setup. Our next problem has a sales team consisting of eight women and four men. Four members are selected at random to attend a strategy meeting. Find the probability that the group selected consists of two women and two men. So is this a permutation or a combination? Well, this one happens to be a combination. And the reason it happens to be a combination is because order doesn't matter in a meeting. We just need to have um, four people in the meeting. The order doesn't really matter. So find the total number of ways that um, the meeting could be formed. So we are picking from a total of 12 people. And we're picking four members to go to the meeting. So the formula there is going to be 12 factorial over 12 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial. So in the numerator, I have 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. I stop at 8 factorial because I'm going to divide it by the 8 factorial on the bottom. So 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 is going to be 11,880. In the bottom, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24. And 11,880 divided by 24 is 495. So there's 495 ways we could pick four random people out of the 12, okay? But we kind of want that this group to have two men and two women. So if I'm going to have two men, I need to pick two men from the group of four men. And I'm going to multiply that by, I'm going to pick two women from a group of eight women and see how many different ways I could get that. So for the men, I've got four factorial over four minus two factorial times two factorial. For the women, we've got 8 factorial over 8 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So 4 times 3 times 2 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 times 1. The 2 factorials divide. Uh, for the women, I have 8 times 7 times 6 factorial over 6 factorial, so the 6 is divide. So we have 12 over 2 times 
is that 56 divided by 2. So we have 6 times 28. And that comes out to be 168 different ways that we could have two men and two women. So the last thing we're going to do is put that together. And the probability of having two men, two women is 168 over 495. And I think that reduces by, I think maybe three. Let's try it. 168 divided by three. is 56 and 495 divided by 3 is 165 and I don't think that is going to reduce anymore so we are done.